Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is part two of a little mini-series that I'm calling the Regression Approach to ANOVA. And we're going to look at type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4 sums of squares and, and try to explain what each of those mean. Well, maybe not type 4 sum squares. <laughs> well, but one big note is we're about 50 videos into this playlist of design of experiments. Now I haven't mentioned type 1 through type 4 sums of squares and, the, and, and I asked the question why? Well the reason is we've only considered balanced designs without interactions. <clears throat> and in balanced designs without interactions all four sums of squares are equal. And we'll prove this in the next video for two-way ANOVAs. But let's illustrate these sums of squares with an example. Um, so here's the model. is y equals mu1 plus a or x a a x beta b. At, you know, this is the interaction term between a and b. This is uh, x c interaction between A and C, the interaction between B and C, and the three-way interaction between all three factors. Okay, And now the order in which we put these in the model is important. Well, it's important for type 1 sums of squares, which we'll illustrate. Now remember that RC given AB is the reduction in the air sum of squares when C is added to the model containing A and B. And see part one for a little more details of that. And that's it. That's, that's, that's the, um, this is the reduction in, this is, you know, will play a part in the type one through type four sums of squares. It's the reduction in the sum of squares error when C is added to the model when A and B are already in the model. Okay. So in our model, these are the sources. Now, I put them in the same order that they're here. Right? So, in type 1 sums of squares, it's often called the se sequential sum of squares because we look at A given mu. Now, often you pretty much always leave the mu or the constant out, you just write it R of A. So, but it's a reduction in the sum of squares when the when A is added to the model with only the, the constant parameter in it. It's the reduction in the sum of squares. Then you go to the next one. Remember we're dealing with type 1 sums of squares. So it's the reduction in the sum of squares when B is added to the model that, that already has A in it. Right? So that's this type 1 sum, sequential sum of squares. So, notice we left the mu out. So it's, it's really B given A and mu, but you always leave the mu out. You just write it like this. Now the next uh, term in the model is the interaction term. So in type 1 sums of squares, it's going to be the reduction in the sum of squares there when, a, when the interaction term is out of the model that already has A and B in it then the type 1 sums of square associated with C in this model is the reduction in the sum of squared error when C is added to the model that already contains A, B and the interaction term for A, B. And so we, we just keep doing this so we go to the next term. And then it's the reduction in the sum of squares error when A, C is added to the model, the interaction term, when A, B the interaction term A, B, and C are out of the model. It's pretty much everything before it. And then we continue. It's the reduction in the sum squares there. When the interaction term B, C is out of the model, given the model already contains everything before it. And then the same way with the three-way interaction. So that's the type 1 sum of squares. And actually, one of the beauties of type 1 sums of squares, it actually partitions the model and these these will add to the sum of squares treatment and so 
But there's also some cons associated with the type 1 sum of squares. Now, type 2 sum of squares, the order in which the terms are added to the model does not matter. What matters is higher order terms are, well, let's, let me just illustrate. So, we'll, R of A, so it's the reduction in the sum of squared error when A is out of the model that already has B, C, and the interaction term B, C. Notice that there's no interaction terms that involve A in here, but all the other terms are. That's type 2 sum of squares. So then we go to B over here. So it's the reduction of sum of squared error for when B is out of the model given that A, C, and A, C are added. So it's every other term but higher order terms that contain B. Now let's look at the interaction term AB. So it's the reduction of sum squared error given that AB is out of the model that already contains ABC, AC, and BC. So notice it's pretty much every other term but no higher order terms that contain A and B. So the, the, the three-way interaction term is not added. Now let's look at C. C is, it's the reduction in sum squared error when C is out of the model that already contains A, B, and the interaction term A, B. A, C, it's, it's the same. B, C. Now the three-way interaction term contains every, since that's the highest order term, it contains every other term. So it's the reduction in the sum squared error when, a, when the three-way interaction term is added to the model that contains A, B, C, A, B, A, C, and B, C. Now type three sums of squares is actually a little simpler, but can be a little bit dangerous when you're interpreting them. Now, if we look at the type three sum of squares for A, really it's it's it, it's a reduction of the sum of squared error when A is out of the model, given that every other term is in the model. B, it's it's the same. It's the reduction of the sum of squared error when B is out of the model, given that every other term is in the model. A B, it's the same. So. It's, we're adding A, B to a model that contains every other term. And, that, and it's actually type 3 sum of squares interpreted the same way. Now, the danger of this is that when one of these interaction terms are significant, then the type 3 sums of squares for A, B, or C really don't make sense. And we'll cover that in much more detail um, in later mini-series, but that's one of the dangers of type 3 sums of squares. Now type 4 sums of squares, you're going to be a little disappointed with me. Um, type 4 sums of squares was developed when designs have empty cells or no data. And I don't really know much more than that. I've never used it. Um, I've never actually studied it. And so I, I, it would be a disservice if I tried to give you more. Maybe one of these days I'll research it, investigate it, and do a video on it. But for now, that's all I'm going to provide. Now, the default sums of squares for R is type 1 sums of squares. And actually, several people, lots of people, find that frustrating, that that's, that's all they provide. Um, Python, I think the default is type 2. Someone may need to confirm that for me. The default for SAS is type 3. And a big note, there are pros and cons with each of these types of sums of squares. And as we proceed through this playlist, we'll go into more detail of each of these sums of squares. But that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.